Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna make a pretty easy uh, chocolate sabli cookie today. Um, sabli comes from the word, I, I, it implies sandiness, so like shortbreads and stuff like that. Although this is not a shortbread, it has a little bit of leavener in it, um, but it's not quite as chewy um, as a chocolate chip cookie, but one of my top five cookies. Um, this is a recipe adapted from Dory Greenspan. Um, she calls these world peace cookies. Um, I've modified some of the ingredients slightly. I am adding pistachios to them today. You do not have to add pistachios. Um, you can add another nut. Um, I've added toffee to these, um, or you can just leave all of that out and enjoy a simple chocolate on chocolate cookie. Um, pretty straightforward. The one thing about this cookie is that there is no eggs involved. Um, and this is also, you can do this cookie two ways. Um, I will sometimes scoop these cookies and bake them like normal cookies um, or scoopable cookies, um, or I will do a uh i will roll them up and do a slice and bake cookie today i'm going to show you the slice and bake method um, it involves a few extra steps but if you want to just scoop this dough and bake it like a normal cookie perfectly fine too i would often do that in the bakery and save us a step from basically doing the slicing a roll of cookie dough um, and trying to get um, everything lined up nicely and perfectly two things don't use cheap chocolate. You know how I feel about that. And this recipe does call for cocoa powder. Don't use cheap cocoa powder. Hershey's is fine. It's fine. But like if you can find a Ghirardelli or a, a Guitard a cocoa powder, I'm using cocoa berry, which you have to order online because you're not going to find it in a grocery store. Um, it's more of a professional dark chocolate cocoa powder um, which is down here um, it's a much more intense chocolatey flavor higher quality than Hershey's Hershey's is fine but you're gonna get a much better cookie if you actually spend some money um, and buy a nicer cocoa powder for these cookies I'm also using a nice chocolate this is Valrona you don't have to go crazy and get Valrona but try and get something above a regular chocolate chip uh, from like Hershey's or what a Toll House, um, not that great. Um, but we're doing a creaming method today, pretty straightforward. We're creaming our butter and our sugar, then we're adding our dry ingredients and our chocolate and our toasted salted pistachios are going in last. Um, pretty, it looks like there's a lot of ingredients here, but it's essentially a pretty, pretty quick cookie. Um, so for our creaming portion, we are doing 225 grams of butter, which is two sticks of butter, which is eight ounces. I'm doing 200 grams of dark brown sugar, 75 grams of granulated sugar. I'm also going to go ahead and add my six grams of vanilla extract and four grams of Tribli. If you haven't seen my other recipes, this is a coffee extract. Um, you can buy cocoa uh, espresso powder. Um, or instant coffee if you don't have this. Um, the coffee flavor basically intensifies the chocolate flavor. Um, you can leave this out, this is completely optional. Um, I like it because it makes for a more intense chocolate cookie. Um, but if you are using a, um, an instant coffee or a dried um, espresso powder, um, you can also use about four grams of that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in my mixer. That's my butter, my dark brown sugar, my vanilla extract, my granulated sugar, and my coffee extract, which is a bit sticky. I'm just going to scrape it down in there. And then my paddle attachment. For my mixer and I'm going to put this on a medium speed. Basically just going to mix this all into a homogeneous mixture. What we're doing is incorporating some air into the butter and sugar. 
you'll see this will start to get nice and light and fluffy. So while that's mixing, I've already chopped up my chocolate. If you have um, chocolate chips, you might want to give them like a slight chop. The thing about, you probably want, if you're going to do a slice and bake cookie, you're going to be slicing cold cookie dough with a knife. And if you have big pieces of chocolate in your cookie dough, it's going to get very hard when it's cold, so it's going to be harder to slice and slice evenly. So the smaller your chocolate pieces are, the better. If you're just going to scoop, I would worry less about it. Um, but if you are going to do a slice and bake cookie, then you might want your chocolate slightly smaller. I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the sides on this real quick before I start the next portion of the recipe. And then turn this back on medium speed. So while that is mixing, I have all-purpose flour, cocoa powder, iodized salt, and baking soda. So I've got 255 grams of all-purpose flour. I have 42 grams of cocoa powder. I have four grams of iodized salt and four grams of baking soda. That's all going in together. Sorry for the loud noise. I'm using my very gay whisk. And I'm going to whisk all these together. Now, cocoa powder can get a little clumpy. Let's see, there's some bigger chunks of cocoa powder in there. I'm gonna use a fine mesh strainer here to kind of work this all together. Sometimes if you leave that cocoa powder in there in the big clumps, it's not going to mix very well into your cookie dough. And then you run the risk of having a big clump of dry cocoa powder in your cookie, which does not taste very good at all. I recommend this step because of that. If you want to get crazy and just say, I don't feel like doing that, you can do it, but you do run that risk of having some clumps of cocoa powder in your cookie dough. see here as I'm just shaking it all these clumps that are left in, in here. I'm just going to take this and work these through. Kind of force them into the side to capture them. to whisk this together one more time to make sure. Oh no. Don't worry. If that happens, have this, which will clean up nicely. And I have this. Wipe it all down. So we're good. So I want to make sure that my cocoa powder, my salt, my baking soda is evenly distributed among my flour so it all bakes evenly. You want to definitely make sure any leaveners you put in a recipe are well incorporated into the dry ingredients. So when you go to bake whatever you're making, you don't have pockets that are baking up and other pockets that are not baking. Um, in the case of cookies, you might have cookies that bake up really high and other ones that don't at all. Um, 
so we're trying to avoid that. Now if we had eggs in this recipe, eggs would go in next, but we don't have eggs, so we're skipping that step. You can see this is getting lighter in color and appearance. I'm going to go ahead and scrape this down one more time. Got kind of a medium high heat now, or medium high medium high speed. Um, and this is nice and cream. White color, homogenous, fully mixed. I'm going to turn this back down to a low speed so my flour doesn't go anywhere when it turns back on. And I'm going to mix about half of my dry ingredients in. back on, let it mix about halfway to fully incorporated, still kind of clumpy, turn it off, put the second half in. Now because, again, I don't really want tough cookies, I don't need to over mix this recipe, I'm going to go ahead and throw in about half of my chocolate and then let this mix again. And say a prayer that it does not break the bowl. I've broken so many bowls on this mixer because I've tried to mix too much cookie dough. So it's starting to come together. It's still very clumpy in a sense. It'll come into a complete full dough form. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add the rest of my chocolate. Still on low speed. And then I'm gonna start adding in my pistachios. Now these pistachios are toasted and salted. If you are viewing nuts, make sure you toast your nuts first. Do not put in raw nuts, it's not gonna taste very good. Also, I'm leaving them whole because I'm doing a slice and bake cookie and I want to see, I like the whole, I like to see very nice, big, distinct pieces of the cookie, or of the nut in the cookie dough. You can see this has almost come together here. It's pretty much one cohesive dough. I'm going to turn this off. It's pulled away from the sides of the bowl. If you want to chop the nuts up, you can, but we're cutting about quarter inch size thick cookies, and so we'll basically be doing the slicing of the nuts and the cutting of the nuts as we cut the cookies for portioning. So I'm not going to basically, if you want really small pieces of, of, of nut in your, um, in your cookie, then you feel free to go ahead and cut them before. Um, but I want like a nice big cross section of the pistachio. At least that's what I'm attempting to get from this cookie. And so I'm not chopping those up. Those are full pistachios, toasted and salted. Um, so here comes the rolling out part. Some people will do this with plastic wrap. I prefer parchment paper. Parchment paper has a little more structure to it. Um, and then I basically roll it in parchment paper and then roll it in plastic wrap to keep it from drying out. So this is a half sheet size, half sheet pan size of parchment paper, um, like 12 by 24. Maybe it's 12 by 18. What is it? We'll solve this problem right now. 12 by 16. I was wrong both times. It's been a while since I've worked in kitchens and I remember. I think a full sheet pan is 12 by 24 or maybe it's 14 by 24. It's something by 24. So this is our dough here. You can see it's all nice and fully mixed. 
And then it's it's not sticky. It's not a sticky dough like a chocolate chip cookie that has a lot of sugar and a lot of butter and eggs in it. So we're basically forming this into a log. Again, if you don't want to do slice and bake, you can just scoop these and bake these. But I'm going to show you a different technique. You can do this with shortbread cookies um, and other various cookies that have doughs of the same, basically, structure um, that this does. So depending on how big of a circumference you want the cookie is how far you're going to work this dough down. I made some in advance and I made them relatively big. I would say they're probably about three to four inches in diameter. So they're, you know, about that big or so. I could make these smaller, but I want these to line up with my other cookies in a sense. So I'm actually not gonna go lengthwise with this. I'm going to go this way because I want a thicker cookie, essentially. Now this probably is not gonna be perfect because nothing I do in baking is, but I'm, I'm striving to match the size of my other cookies. Um, and mind you, I, I had this recipe written in my recipe book, but I had it written for Commercial Kitchen and for my bakery. So it made, well, I actually think I had halved it already and it was still way too much dough. So I made a ton of these cookies. It was too much to fit in this bowl and I had to finish mixing it by hand. So a lot of this, this channel for me has been going back to my old recipes and looking at them and being like, is this going to be like way too much baked goods for someone to want in their home? For me, I don't care. I'm just going to freeze it and I'll use it at another time. But um, for someone like you who might just want some to have in your house, like some of these recipes are way too much. So you can see I'm working this down into a log and I'm shaping it I'm using this basically to help me shape it into a circle. Now some cooking personalities and websites will show you how to... The problem with this and keeping it in a circle shape is that you're shaping it on a flat surface and it's going to be chilling in the fridge on yet again another flat surface so your its propensity is going to be to have a flat side like this um, there is the um, paper towel roll trick where you take the center core of paper towels like this take one of these tubes and cut it open and then you basically put your dough inside of this so it can sit inside of a circular tube shape so you help maintain that circular shape. That is one of the best ways I know how since most people don't have like large pieces of PVC or pipe sitting around that they can chill cookie dough in. Um, I am a little more neurotic in the sense than that I will continually go into the fridge and make sure that I'm moving the dough as it's chilling to help maintain and keep this circular shape going as best as possible. Um, so you do what works for you, but do keep in mind that if you are doing something like this and you're going to do a slice and bake roll cookie, that you are gonna run the risk of having a flat side um, because of the nature of it cooling on and chilling on a flat surface. So basically I've got a nice cylinder here. I'm just going to take this parchment paper and just roll it all the way. And then I'm going to basically take this and wrap it in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out. And then, you know I like to make my cookies a day in advance. Um, at least I would give it 
two to four hours in the fridge so the entire cookie can chill all the way to the center of the dough. Um, that's a good, a good time for, especially if it's thinner, obviously it's gonna not take that long to chill. Um, but for a cookie like this, this is about two and a half, three inches in size, the dough. Um, I would say it's probably gonna at least take three hours for it to be fully chilled on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and flash forward. I'm actually gonna rest that on its end so it still stays circular. So it's sitting in the fridge like this on its end so I don't have to worry so much about it. And it's short enough to where it will stand up. If you make a really long, thin log, it's not gonna stand up. Anyways, this is the dough that I made the other day. I did not put pistachios in this dough. This is just my straightforward recipe. That way, if you don't wanna use pistachios in the recipe, just omit the pistachios, skip that step, and then you will have this dough. So this dough was made yesterday, and I've cut it. Um, you want to keep your cuts as nice and parallel as possible. I can see I cut this side at a bit of an angle. Um, if you have a cutting board or a plastic cutting thing, a plastic cutting thing. It's very technical. Um, just line it up to one of the edges and see how it lines up. Um, I can see that this is a little off. I'm just going to shave a little bit off this dough so I can have a nice even cookies when they bake. There's a few extra steps in this because of the nature of slice and bake cookies. And if you want, you can just eat this cookie dough, do whatever. So you can basically now just slice these. I would slice it in half and then continue slicing in half until you have the sides. If you go from one side down, you're liable to end up with your last cookie being a different length of the other cookie. So it's best to basically Find your center of your dough. This is almost five inches. So we're just gonna do like two and three quarters here and then we would slice it from there. I, of course, have to add a little flourish to these um, because that's just how I am. Um, I'm gonna roll these in sanding sugar. So I've got my sanding sugar here. If you don't have this, this is just like a large crystallized sugar. You can also use the sugar in the raw, the large brown sugar, or you can just use regular granulated sugar um, that is going to soak somewhat into the cookies because we are going to um, basically be using an egg wash, which I just have one egg and a tablespoon of tap water here for my egg wash um, to get the sanding sugar to stick to the side of the cookie. Now you can just roll the cookie dough in the sanding sugar, but all that stuff's gonna fly off when you go to eat it um, or you go to bake it. It's not going to stay as well. So I have a piece of parchment paper here. I have my egg wash here and I have my pastry brush. I'm just going to put a thin layer of egg wash on this cookie dough all the way around. Not get the pieces of the pastry brush on the cookie dough itself. Don't put a lot on here, you just want enough to get the sugar to stick. Like if you start getting a really thick layer of egg wash on it, it's going to be hard to maneuver and work with. So just a very thin layer fully covered all the way around. I'm going to take my sanding sugar and just pour it down on a dry surface. I'm using another piece of parchment paper here. And then I'm just going to take this cookie dough and basically press it down on the sanding sugar all the way around. 
make sure that I get all of them in. There's some, there's this part here that's not wanting to stick to. Just go ahead and throw it on there and get it nice and coated. Now my extra sanding sugar I'm going to put back because I can reuse that. And now it's time to cut our cookies. Now I've got a um, baking sheet ready with a parchment piece of paper on it. I've got my oven preheated to 350. Um, everything's ready to go to bake these cookies. After I cut these cookies, these cookies can go straight in the oven. They're ready to bake. I am going to start at the center here and just slice straight down. Now this dough is cold. You do want to use a sharp knife and you can see here it broke a bit. Don't worry, don't freak out, it's okay. It's going to happen when you're making cookies like this, especially if they have chunks of chocolate in it. The chocolate is not going to cut very nicely and it's going to be a little maybe frustrating, but just make sure you're using a very sharp knife, especially if you're cutting through something as thick as this cookie is at the size. That's why I said sometimes Instead of doing this step, we will just scoop and bake them. I just did that at my, uh, my um, bakery because it was easier to delegate that to employees and have more consistency with it. But I am showing you this. This is a much easier process if you're working with a thinner, smaller cookie. But I do like the size of these cookies to be larger. And so I have decided to do um, this method for these. So you can see sometimes when you hit the chocolate pieces, it starts to want to make your knife go all wonky. Just try to stay the course as best as possible. And you're not gonna get like perfect, you can see the camera's maybe picking that up. It's a little thinner, it's a little thicker, it's okay. It's going to end up baking out just fine. Um, but it's not going to look like completely, completely perfect. If you're using just like a straight dough, with nothing in it it's much and smaller circles it's much easier to keep a more consistent thickness top to bottom on these cookies but because of the size of these and the amount of chocolate that I put in them it's going to be a little bit harder to get you know all of these kind of the same so you can see here this kind of is a bit of a a little mess because I've got this one that's pretty good size and cut but then this one kind of fell apart so if this happens don't worry you just take the cookie dough and you basically squish it back together and you have another cookie here again keep keeping on with what we've been doing we're taking the other half of this dough And then down the center, trying to keep straight down as possible, and then down the center of each one of these as best as possible. See, this one started to break here because it hit a piece of chocolate and it ripped a little bit. Don't worry, smash it back together. This one, the side broke off, don't worry, just smash it back together. And then this one, also make sure you're not going to cut through your hand. And then this one kind of like, there's a big old piece of chocolate here. And so it kind of just disintegrated. Now, because of all of this moving around and stuff, some of the sugar has gotten pressed into the actual cookie itself. It's not gonna be that pretty. Well, we already have the egg wash on there. We already have more sugar. We just dip it back in the sugar all the way around to get a nice complete edge on these cookies so don't worry it's not the end of the world like i said these this method of making these cookies is an extra step but they look really nice and they're sometimes fun to do um, especially if you're 
going for a nice visual effect of a cookie with a edge that has these large sanding sugar crystals on them. So some of these came out pretty pretty straightforward. I'm just re I'm just taking that one just completely broke inside the thing. It's fine. Don't worry. I'm going to smash it back together and it will bake all as one. And so six to a tray. These are going to expand a little bit. Um, these are about two and a half, three inches. They're going to end up being about like three and a half inches once they're done baking. They go in the oven eight minutes at 350. Rotate the pan another six minutes. You'll get like a slight crackle on the top when they're done. Total of about 14, 15 minutes for all the cookies and then we'll be right back when they, we pull them out and I'll show you what they look like. We're back. The cookies have baked. This is what they look like. So you can see they've come to be about, let me pull out my ruler again, oh my god. Uh, a little over four inches each. Um, very chocolatey. Uh, you can see the sugar crystals on the side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break open one of the thicker ones. Um, you can get kind of an idea of the interior. My camera will catch up to how fast I am. Super chocolatey cookie. I love chocolate. One of my favorite things in the world. Not so much chewy, a little more sandy, a very dense chocolate cookie. Top five cookies of all times. The ones I'm baking, the other ones that I'm baking after the ones that I made will have pistachios in them. I will take some pictures, put them on the Patreon. You can also add like dried raspberries to them or another dried fruit. Um, I have not tried that yet, but I have seen Dory Greenspan do those. Um, a solid cookie, chocolate sibley. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you all for your support, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.